okay, gonna show you Steven Anderson's angry spirit that he has and just showing you that he is not qualified. I mean, he already disqualified himself when his two, I think his two oldest sons were sending these perverted uh, messages. I have the screenshots and I have them in a folder somewhere, but they're pretty perverted messages. But it showed that he wasn't ruling his own house well. And one of the qualifications for a bishop is they had to be ruling their own house well. Well, Anderson proved he wasn't doing that over the summer. But another qualification for a bishop is they can't be angry. They can't be soon angry. I mean, just watch these three videos and just how angry Anderson is. Uh, the first video where he's confronting Tyler Baker on this oneness heresy. And uh, one, of the, one of the things these Anderson followers do is, and I mean, I'm not saying Tyler, Tyler Baker believes in biblical godhead, but oftentimes they'll equate the biblical godhead to oneness, but... Um, it's ridiculous, but just watch how he just screams and yells at him. I mean, forget just being a pastor. Any employer who treated his employees like this, you know, would have no employees. You know, and it turns out that Anderson, I think, admitted in a video that I guess has been deleted, that apparently uh, he he told nobody, told, he told basically no recordings of it, and I guess someone just secretly recorded it or whatever. I don't know, that's what I heard, but uh, watch this, check this out. Actually, turn to the verse of scripture first, actually to kind of prove uh, Anderson is not a servant of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, a god preventer will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Another verse of scripture that kind of ties into this. 1 Timothy six eleven. Be thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, good, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And, of course, Titus chapter 3, another good one. Titus chapter 3. Uh, where is it? Yeah, verse number 1, sorry. Put them in mind, Titus chapter 3, verse number 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, Anderson doesn't really do that when he's just picking a fight with the Border Patrol and arguing with police officers. And obviously, I, I would agree that there are some crazy police officers out there, but he just goes and picks fights with police officers, which is not right. Uh, to be ready uh, to every to, sorry to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, not be sorry to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. And goes down there, talks about not by works of righteousness which we have done. But again, when you're a servant of God, you're supposed to be meek, you're supposed to be patient towards those that oppose themselves. And Anderson definitely does not do that. So let's watch this, these crazy just rantings that had raving, ranting. Uh, it's like a pope, it's like a cult leader, like a pope. It's crazy. Watch this. Us all last night at some barbecue or something? I was not. You're going around telling everybody about Babylon. You're telling everybody oh, about your no. oneness Pentecostal crap. You suck as an employee. You have sucked the whole time you worked here. You go around singing your own praises. I have been this close to firing you every month. The only reason I kept you around is because I don't want to rock the boat. You're leaving anyway. You know, if I had to work with you for the rest of my life, I would have fired you a long time ago. You are lazy. You suck. You've never done anything that I told you to do beyond the minimum. Any extra, hey, try to work on this, try to get this up. You do the minimum of everything. You phone it in. At the best of times, you're a C minus. He can say now, that. Now, keep in mind, this camera is not, it's basically someone secretly recording it. So this is what Anderson is like off camera because he doesn't know he's being recorded. Just keep that in mind. Anderson does not know he's being recorded. So this is what he's like off camera, basically. Just keep that in mind. This is his true colors, basically. When he's on camera, he's all, you know, polite, all civilized. But this is the real Anderson off camera. When you meet him in person, basically. When you know him in person. At Garrett will say the same thing because we've observed your habits of doing nothing and people going to move there just because they just want to move there. And I thought it was great. And I was encouraging people. But now I find out it's because you're talking crap about our oh, church God. and telling them how your church is going to be better. Yes, sir, I promise I'm not doing that. I promise to you. You're a liar. I, we, I promise you, Pastor. I promise from the bottom of promise? my heart what do you that I am not trying to split the church. You believe in the oneness? I don't. I believe that yeah, Jesus is the Father. Baptism and Jesus only. Jesus is the Father. That's heresy. I did not and think that it was that big of a deal. I honestly oh, yeah, did not. Yeah, the Trinity is kind of a big deal. It's funny that the Trinity is a big deal. Okay, where is the word Trinity in the, the Word of God? Let me show you this. Let's just go into your Bible 
and search up the word Trinity. Oh, look at that, zero results. The word Trinity is not found anywhere in the King James Bible. The biblical term is Godhead. Let me show you that for all the uh, preschoolers out there. Godhead. Oh, look at that, it comes up three times. Godhead is a scriptural term. Trinity is found nowhere in the Word of God. Continuing. Somebody is a liar. And I think it's you. Because your life doesn't bet your testimony sucks right now. So I'm I'm I think you're the liar, but we'll find out on Wednesday night when we take you before the whole church and we find out what's really been going on. We'll find out who you've been talking your oneness crack to. Be an idiot and play semantics with me. I'm not gonna play your stupid game. You understand? I'm not three. Oneness, it means that Jesus is the Father. That's a stupid doctrine. It denies the Trinity. It's false. You understand? I don't believe in it. You and you say, hey, I don't want to talk about that. Like you promised me that you would. You told me, you little liar, that would And that's quick little heads up. There's going to be some profanity used. Um, just a quick disclaimer. Came to you and asked you about it. You said, hey, I don't want to talk I about that. I did that, that multiple times. Really that is the truth. I did yeah, but now I guess times. you're all high and mighty now because you think you're leaving. You can do whatever the hell you want because you're leaving in a month and a half. You think you can just suck as an employee. You don't do anything I tell you to do. You do nothing. What the hell did you do for 50 hours last week? I all right, that's enough of that. Uh, I just, again, you have to keep in mind that Anderson is not aware he's being recorded. So this is the real Anderson, what he's like when he's not in front of a camera with a script. So, but this uh, this this last video I showed in my video titled uh, Stephen Anderson's Angry Spirit, where he basically is ranting about some people in the church rejecting the Trinity and, and just like a good cult leader or pope would. Uh, but then this other video uh, is again, Anderson basically showing his true colors. And just like the last video, in this video, Anderson was not aware he was being recorded. Uh, there was a video, again, the same video where he mentioned this time, because he was he did a video, it's been deleted, uh, but he did a video where he was reacting to a video against him where someone was showing these clips, and he said, well, you know, I, I told no one to record, you know, I wasn't aware. So Anderson was not aware he was being recorded in this video either. So again, this is the true Anderson, what he's like off camera. Let's watch this. Right here has texted people without coming Well, and also me. another heads up, there's going to be some profanity in this video, too. He, he uses the H word in this video, too. Wonderful, godly Christian that he is. Look, if he had a problem with my doctrine, shouldn't he have come to me? Yeah. Yeah. Or should he be going behind my back and backbiting, going to other church members who never asked his opinion, mind you, never even asked and said, hey, uh, Chris, what do you think about Pastor Anderson's sermon? He just texts them because he saw them on YouTube defending me. So because they were on YouTube defending me, he takes it upon himself to rebuke them for the defending the pastor of his church, calls my statements wicked and evil. And listen, this you know, I know your your faggoty buddy Ashton Yakton lets everybody get up and say whatever they want. But in this church, it's not a free for all, it's not an open mic. You don't come to this church and pretend to be a faithful member of the church while you're going behind the pastor's back. Did you ever have the guts to confront me with that, Chris? Huh? Did you ever have the it, it, it's just funny how Anderson is standing on a chair like a like a child. I mean, I mean this is not how grown adults behave, let alone saved born again Christians. You know, and then calling people who disagree with you faggots and stuff and you know. So I mean, I, I haven't seen this this Ashvin the acting guy or whatever. And he, I mean, he does, you know, seem almost like a sodomite, but um, you know, Anderson just calls everyone a sodomite who doesn't agree with him. Because Anderson preaches hard against the sodomites, so if you disagree with him, you're probably a sodomite. It, it's like this, this kind of false dichotomy that all these cults have. It's like with Denlinger's cult. If you disagree with Denlinger, you're probably a Jesuit, you're a Catholic. You know, it's uh, insanity. So someone can preach against the satanic cult of Catholicism, but then if they disagree with Denlinger, they're a Catholic. Just like if someone can preach against the sin of sodomy, but if they disagree with Anderson, they're a sodomite sympathizer or something. Just have to point that out. It's just cultic nonsense. You can prompt me with that, Chris. No, you didn't. You didn't have the guts, you coward. You're like Judas. You want to go behind my back? I want you to get up and get out of this church right now. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out. What's that? Here's my people, Brown. You're a Judas Iscariot. Railer. Railer. Yeah. Simulator. Backbiter. I don't care if you're saved or not. You don't come to this church and backbite the pastor without even having the guts to confront him yourself and go around and say all this stuff, huh? Why do you want to be here, Chris? 
if I'm tampering with the gospel. There are 40 other independent Baptist churches in this town that are King James only that don't, quote, tamper with the gospel. So why don't you go join one of them, friends? Why are you even here? Oh, really? But the pastor makes wicked and evil statements and tampers with the gospel. That's not a great church, Chris. You're right. Disagreeing with, disagreeing with what I preach is not a reason to be kicked out. You're right. Because listen to me. No one in this church agrees with me on everything. And that's okay. Because we're all different. We all read the Bible. We all have the Holy Spirit. No <laughs> so he, he's, he's basically saying that, oh, people don't have to agree with me. Well... A lot of the evidence suggests differently. When people disagree with them, they get a lot, they call, you know, an Adam Fannin. Uh, and of course, I have disagreements with Adam Fannin, but uh, the way he was treated by these guys for not submitting to Shelley, uh, who wasn't even the pastor at the time, is uh, pretty cultic. But then he's going to say, oh, you don't have to agree with me. Again, it, it's, it's this cultic thing of where Adam Denlinger does the same thing. Basically, it, it's actually amazing how similar the new IFB cult is to Denlinger's cult. It, they're, they're so similar. I mean, not maybe not doctrinally, but in terms of how they behave, they're very similar. But they will say something, and then they'll basically contradict themselves in like other other times to say, "Well, you know, I did say, you know, that it, it's again, it's deception, cultic deception." Two Christians are going to agree on everything. That's fine. No problem. I've had people come up to me and say, "Hey, I don't agree with this doctrine." I always tell them, "That's okay. You don't have to agree with me. You're welcome to come here." But there's a big difference between not agreeing and calling the pastors preaching wicked and evil and accusing him of tampering with the gospel behind his back without ever bringing that to me. Do you see the difference, Chris? No, no. Watch, watch what happens now. So he tells, he uses the profanity, he tells the guy that you know get the H out of there, and then some other guy tries to defend him, and Anderson just chews off that guy uh, for no reason, and tells him to get out, and it's like, you know, and this is not somehow a cult where you have a pope who's just railing against anyone who dares to question his authority. And Jack Hollis did the same thing. Uh, they become their own popes. Get out of here, idiot. Pick him up and take him out if you won't leave. You need to pray take him out. Hey, get out of here. I didn't ask you. You've never even been here, fool. Get out. Get out. Get out. You don't just walk. Okay, uh, chapter and verse for that. Because there are sins people would, you get kick somebody out for he just kicked the guy out because he disagreed with anderson so in one breath he says oh people don't have to agree with me but then when someone disagrees with him and, and attempts to stick up for the other guy anderson says like get the hell out of here you know um okay so it's not a cult but it, you know yeah it's a cult Walk in here and start telling us how to run the church. We got a bunch of filthy faggots out there protesting us right now we're in a battle right now get out of here and ask your advice. Pick him up and get him out of here if he won't leave. Yeah, that's fine. It's funny how also a lot of these cults too, they'll have the little henchmen who will just spring into action when, they'll spring right into action when, you know, the Pope demands something. Take your time. Now look, if I, I will listen to people who actually are members of our church, who actually attend here, not a first time visitor. Does somebody, if somebody thinks... Yeah, that's enough of that. I'm going to just turn to one last verse of scripture. Talking about the uh, qualifications for a uh, bishop, which Anderson uh, proved over the summer when it was revealed that his sons being involved in this perverted texting to each other, members of the church. And Where is that? I think it's... Uh, I'm trying to find the script. It's in... Um, it's First Timothy chapter... Yeah, chapter 3. Qualifications for a uh, bishop or an elder. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he, this is 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to... Um, 1 to... Yeah, 1 to 7. Okay. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife... So polygamists obviously can't be bishops because the bishop is the husband of one wife. So obviously, you know, good kick at polygamy there. Because uh, a bishop can't have more than one wife, obviously. The husband of one wife, um, I don't know why, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Hmm, interesting. Not given to wine, nor a striker, no striker, not greedy, a filthy looker, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Kind of like Jack Hiles, the, 
you know, money hungry. All cult leaders are money hungry, pretty much. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Hmm. Kind of a problem when your children are going behind your back and sending weird, lascivious messages to other people. For if a man not know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up of pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, uh, lest he fall into reproach in the snare of the devil. Anderson uh, is disqualified on several different points, but just his anger, you know, all this other stuff, ridiculous. So don't be deceived by this new IP cult. Um, they are tearing each other apart. It, it's pretty insane, but uh, they're a cult, and they are they are basically uh, being raised up by the media to obviously make Bible believers look bad. Uh, don't be deceived by this cult. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.